So here's the incision. Uh, once we found our spot, we make the incision. Now, the consensus for Jones fractures is that you use a very solid screw so there's less flexion at this fracture site. Any flexion at the fracture site can lead to a non-union. Jones fractures, because of the blood supply, uh, the, any motion can lead to a non-union. And those are complicated because then you have to open it up, and you have to scrape all the crap out, and you have to reapply uh, any kind of external fixation, or excuse me, internal fixation to try to make sure that this thing heals properly. And this can be a process that takes a long time. So whenever anybody tells you you have a Jones fracture, you may need surgery, and they're not kidding. In the emergency room, you never say it's quiet. In the operating room, you never say things are going smooth and easy, because it's usually jinxing yourself. So in this next video, what we're doing is we're, we're using a K wire to drive it through and we're putting it, trying it through the, the center of the, the medulla, which is the center of the bone, so that we get the good screw placement. If you try to put the screw in the first try without any kind of K wire, you're going to really destroy the bone. So we use the K wire and I'm worried about making Swiss cheese out of it. If I can help it, I would like to do it on the first try. It never really works out like that. So here's the K-wire driver uh, uh, attached. You use the outside trigger, like guard, to grip the, the wire, and then you use the trigger on the inside of the guard to spin the wire. And the goal is to try to get it through both fracture fragments in anatomic alignment, so that the, 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 the screw that is gonna be following that same bore hole is going to be able to actually compress the two pieces together. And they do this with different um, kind of techniques, one being the lag technique, and we'll go into that in a little bit. I haven't asked this medical student or this podiatrist student to, you know, for permission to put her on here. I'm sure she'll be okay with it, but I'll ask her anyway. Um, but pretty much, um, these, these podiatry students are there to learn as much as they possibly can. You can see her get up, that is lead around her neck, lead around her chest and waist, and that's protected from all the x-rays that are gonna be taken. The patient, we wrap his waist around uh, with lead as well. We limit the amount of radiation to his body, so we limit the amount of problems he can have in the future. In this video, you can see that we're advancing the K-wire. We're optimistic that we're in the right direction, and once we cross that, that, that fracture line, we're doing, we're doing great. So you can see I'm trying to aim that K-wire in the right direction. I'm trying to get down the shaft distally. So what I'm trying to do is I, I pinch the tip of, the, of where I'm aiming, and with proprioception, I could do it without looking. I could always put my, my finger right in the spot, no matter what direction I'm in, mostly. If I was not drinking, I'd be all right. But anyway, uh, the it's easier said than done. Just trust me on that. In this one, you can see that the, uh, the in, this, in this video, we have the, the, the surgical representative, the sales representative for the company that I use. I use Wright, who has been purchased by Stryker. Those guys, they, they their reps are the best. They they really know their stuff. I want that guy in my room every time, every time I do a surgery, because if anything happens, he knows exactly what equipment. He's seen these procedures sometimes more than I have, because he's doing the same three or four procedures, maybe five or six procedures all week long with different guys of different stripes. And uh, so I, I don't have any ego when it comes to asking for some advice from him. So you can see he's covering his neck with that orange lead because he doesn't have a thyroid shield. And so when that x-ray is going off, he's exposed to so much x-rays, he doesn't want his thyroid to get cancer. That's what he's doing that for. You can also see my hands in the x-ray right here. So I, my hands get exposed to a lot of x-rays during these minimally invasive procedures and these, uh, you know, these small incision procedures. Um, there is some case studies where orthopedic surgeons in their 70s and 80s, and they, they practice well, you know, past normal retirement age, and they get carcinomas on their hands because of all the radiation exposure. Um, they were also probably a little bit more cavalier with how much exposure happened to their, their hands, and um, they were also using big ass C-arms. I'm using a mini C-arm. I actually had to push my case back for access to the mini C-arm. This is a 23-year-old, uh, or this is a rather young patient, excuse me, and I didn't want uh, a big C-arm exposing this guy to, to so much radiation. So I use the mini C-arm, it's a little bit less. It's uh, maybe it insignificant, but it's, it's something I wanna consider for him. So when you're doing the, uh, when you're doing the x-rays to confirm that the K-wire is in the right place, you need two views at least. So I use the, this is the lateral view, here's me. Oh, I'm getting it, I'm getting it. This is beautiful footage. Great job by the medical student who, uh, who was observing me doing this case. I'm looking like I'm money right now. And so on the lateral, it looks great. So let's take a look at the, at the AP. Now here comes the AP view, or DP view. 
All right, get it there. Oh, I'm skiving a little laterally. So that's just too lateral. I have to try again. It's a pain in the ass. It's a pain in the ass. So I gotta retry. Now you can see the wire is a little bent. I'm bending the wire against the skin a little bit so that I can get the aim possible. And it's not, you know, it sounds kind of barbaric, but I gotta tell you, it's, so now here, look, it's following the same path. I hope it bounces off that cortex. Bounce off that cortex for me, bud. And so I'm sitting there hoping a lot of it. So this is a kind of sweaty procedure because you throw this K wire so many times, you're just kind of worried that you're not gonna get the, the K wire placement as you want. So with that little, it backed up, it just looked like it was about to go in the right spot. Let's hope. Now this one's looking like the placement is a little bit better. So now it looks good on the AP. Let's check the lateral. Checking the lateral, here we go. Come on, please, please, please. Uh-huh, I think that might be it. Let's push it a little far forward and let's see what happens. We need it all the way down the cortex. You see, you see all the way down the medulla of the bone, the medulla of the bone, however you want to pronounce it. But pretty much the thickened spots on the outside of the bone, they're hard, the, in, the center of the bone, that is going to be where you want that screw. All right, so here, this might be the last one. I'd say probably five or six tries is average, but it's not an easy one, especially since the K wire wants to go into the same hole, it always does. So sometimes you'll oscillate it. When you press one trigger, it spins clockwise. Another trigger, it's counterclockwise. When you press them both, it oscillates. And that helps it kind of not grab any soft tissue as you, you know, send it deep. I don't want it to wrap up any soft, subcutaneous tissue. We got it. There we go. Yeah, we got it on camera. We got it when I when I sent it in there. Everybody's super happy and psyched. Now the easy part comes. Now we throw the screw. Uh, the, the hard part is throwing the K wire. Now this is not a cannulated screw. A lot of times when you do bunions or other kind of situations with maybe even fractures, a lot of the screws are cannulated. There's a hole in the center of the screw and you could throw it, it, it fits right on top of the K wire and you could screw it over. When with Jones fractures, you need a solid screw. So that K wire is gonna come out. We're gonna put some special kind of um, platelet derived growth factor in order to encourage some healing and when we throw the screw in, it's uh, it's very satisfying. Now this screw is partially threaded, which means that the back half of it doesn't have any threads on it. That's because we want the anterior fragment, the fragment closer to the toes, to get grabbed by the threads and then pull closer so that there's compression between the two fragments. If it was fully threaded, we'd have to over drill the proximal fragment, which is you know unnecessary with a partially threaded screw. Here we are measuring the, the screw. We're seeing if this screw is the right size. We use the fluoroscope to help us out. Of course, you can measure off the K wire, but we don't want to have the K wire or the screw go that deep. We don't need it that deep. So that screw looks like it's a good size. So we are using the bevel to make sure that it's not on the, the see you later, but uh, we're not we're using the bevel so it's not going to be pinch on the joint. So you're not going to get the K wire thrown uh, through in the right spot on your first try with a procedure like this. Uh, here we are messing with the, the, the x-ray machine, the fluoroscope it's called, the fluoroscope. Uh, so it looks like I got pretty dang close on this one view, but you always have to check the other view too. So when you check the AP, uh, oh, it looks like I'm dead center, it looks great. And then you're gonna check the lateral, and I was too plantar, I was too dorsal, and it ends up being kind of a, a sweat fest, WrestleMania, whatever you wanna call it. Um, so we just, we, we are patient, you don't get frustrated. Um, we throw the K wire until we, it's exactly where we want it. And then we're going to, uh, do what some people will call the AO procedures, uh, to throw the screw on top of it. What they mean it, when people say that is that typically you need to tap it and ream it and all these other things. There is a sequence of things that need to be done to the bone before you could put a screw into it. Uh, the screw has mass and the bone is massive too. So you need to remove some of that mass in the right kind of way so that the screw can fit and do what you want it to do. In order to get compression of those two pieces, you need something called a lag effect. And now you can create the lag effect by having a partially threaded screw where there's no threads on, on the base of that bone and the distal part of the bone, the, the, the shaft of that bone, will have the threads in it and that will compress them together as opposed to having a fully threaded screw where the thread is throughout the whole part of the screw. And then you would have to 
drill out so that the drill is a wider diameter at the base so the threads don't catch it there. The idea being that the threads don't catch the back, but they catch the front, and then the head starts to touch the back and it squishes it into the front. Here you can see, oh my goodness, did I get it on the first try? Um, hopefully my guy edits it so it looks like I did. But I assure you, I did not, and that is not abnormal. It is, um, it's difficult, you know? It's, uh, as I get better, and I, I'll tell you what, I've been in the operating room with some very, very experienced guys, orthopedic surgeons, foot and ankle fellowship trains from the hospital, special surgery, and they don't get it their first try either. So don't be embarrassed that you're not getting it the first try. So you can see on this one, I'm heading a little too lateral. It's going to pop out that lateral cortex. I'm not trying to make Swiss cheese out of his co uh, cortex. So back up, retry. It's okay if we do a little bit extra um, fenestration, Swiss cheesing, if you want to call it like that, of the fracture zone. Um, but we don't want to really just beat up the rest of his bone. The fracture zone, uh, it's not going to hurt it too bad if there's some fenestration there. It's going to encourage some um, blood flow. Here you can see a little bit of diastasis of the fracture zone as I'm, as I'm uh, tapping this thing. And I think it, it reveals that there's certain, um, there might have been an extra fracture fragment. Now, if that fracture fragment may have been there and I noticed it prior, um, maybe I would have did a hook plate, but it worked out. This patient is healing very good. Um, he's weight bearing as anticipated, no pain. So it, he, it work, it's working out very, very well. And I, I would make the same decision again, knowing what the outcome is today. Now, some of these young men, they have harder bone than some of these older women. A lot of the, pa the procedures that I perform, uh, are on uh, older women, you know, like bunions and hammer toes and stuff, and their bone is relatively soft. We're tapping this screw right now. Or we're tapping this bone in anticipation for the screw. Now that tap that you saw on the x-ray looks a little bit like a screw. That's not a screw, that's the actual tap. Um, it is, what a tap is, is it's carving out the inner part of the bone or wood or whatever you're trying to put a screw into uh, for the screw to eventually fill it in. So here is an interesting part of the video. We are using something called Augment, which is a platelet-derived growth factor recombinated from a bacteria. They use uh, human DNA to make uh, PDGF, and they and we place that in a nice little calcium-based compound as a vehicle, and we place it in the site of the uh, of the screw and the fracture. We want as many things that are going to promote the healing of this as possible. We want this guy to get back on his feet working, doing whatever he wants to do as soon as possible. And we're going to do any product that it is covered and that's not too expensive for him to get to make sure that it happens. So augment. Now here is the actual screw. So here we have the screw. You can see it's partially threaded, meaning that there's only threading on the very tip of it. The rest of the shaft of that screw is not threaded. Uh, and you'll see that the head of that screw uh, is going to have a bevel cut into it, like I described before. It is going to follow the hole that we had uh, previously tapped. We drilled it with the K-wire technically, then we tapped it. Um, and you see a little flute at the end of that uh, that screw, and that helps kind of get some of the chips out of the way. I think that's what gives it its self-reaming um, you know, thing. There's a lot of engineering that's involved in this, these screws, and that's why they cost as much money as they do. So now here I'm doing that little final twist on it because I want that bevel medially. A lot of engineering, these things can cost so much money. You, you blow your mind how much these freaking screws cost. But trust me, you don't want something from Home Depot. Not in your foot. So we uh, put, put the dressing on them, final x-rays just to make sure everything is you know, where it ought to be. Guys, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Please hit the notification bell for more content. And just remember, every day is the best day of your life. Bonus question. What's the most commonly broken bone in the body? Put it in the comments below.